Hello, if you're new to this channel, my name is Rob Carroll, and today I'm gonna be talking about some of the best purchases you can make as a gigging musician. So if you don't know, I am a, a professional musician, gigging musician in New York, and uh, that's pretty much my full-time job, performing and playing around the city, around the surrounding areas. And there are a number of purchases that I've made over the years that I feel have made my life much, much easier as a gigging musician. So today I'm gonna to share some of those with you. So a lot of the items I'm going to include in this video are pretty general purpose musician items, but towards the end, I'm gonna include a couple that are geared more towards singers, guitarists, solo performers. So if you are one of those, stick around to hear the rest of them. Um, if not, you may still enjoy learning about those items because they are pretty freaking awesome. So the first real game-changing purchase that I've made was the rock and roller cart off of Sweetwater. Um, now, you don't have to get it off of Sweetwater, you can get it anywhere. But this thing really truly made one of the biggest differences in uh, getting to and from gigs. So I, a lot of my gigs I have to play keyboard, some of them I play guitar, and a lot of them I bring sound for. So I have to carry a million things, and that sucks. But, you know, I used to have to make trips to and from my car all the time, a lot of trips, and sometimes couldn't park close, you know, you have to walk all that crap a long way. So having a cart, now I can get pretty much everything done in one go and it's amazing. And you know, you don't think you need it. And it's one of those things where until you actually have it and you try it, it's like, ah, I don't need it, I don't need it. And then you have it and it's like, I will never go back to anything else. So rock and roller cart, for sure, one of the best purchases I've ever made. And don't be like me and figure out how to open it because when I first got it, I really didn't understand how the mechanism worked to get the cart handle up. And so I pulled it way harder and broke the metal on the bottom. And now it's defective and doesn't really work that well, but still gets the job done. Okay, one of the next great purchases I made, and it may seem pretty obvious, but I know a lot of people that still don't use them yet, uh, is an iPad. One of the best things I've ever done, truly. Uh, I used to use a binder and have all my lyric sheets and chord charts and sheet music all in one big heavy binder and I would carry that from gig to gig and you know it was again was one of those things where I didn't think about it and it's like okay well I don't know any other way so it's fine and then one day my parents got me an iPad um, just because it was some deal uh, when they got new phones or something and so I said sure I'll take it and then I started transferring little by little all of my documents and sheets from my computer over to the iPad. And before I knew it, it was the only thing, only thing I could do. I would never go back to a binder. Um, I know some people prefer it, you know, for having a physical thing or reading in front of them, or they don't like reading on a screen, but seriously, it's unbelievable. You can have everything in one place, in one program, and I would never go back to using a binder ever again. And that perfectly segues into my next great purchase, which is a series of apps that I use on the iPad pretty much, if not every gig, in preparation for every gig. The first app, for score is what I keep all of my music in, and it's amazing. You can keep sheet music in there, you can keep chord charts, you can keep lyric sheets, whatever you want, and you can make set lists and have all these different arrangements of songs in different orders for different events. I have one for my wedding band, one for my cover band, one for when I do solo gigs at restaurants, and they're all just easily there. You can move them in any order you want. Before that, I was using Adobe PDF Reader, and it's fine, you know, it reads the PDFs like it is supposed to do. But this is just light years above that, and it can do anything you want in terms of creating set lists and keeping your songs in one organized library, amazing, great purchase. The next app that I use all the time is iReal, and this is an app on the store that is basically a real book, but on your iPad. Now, it's got some limitations. It doesn't have the melodies for pretty much any of the songs, and all of the content is user-generated, so you go on the forums, then inside the app, and you can download tons of user-created content. Now, a lot of it's amazing. Some of it is not, and some of it's not all correct, but a large majority of it is. So it's a huge lifesaver, especially on jazz gigs or something, where I have to look something up that I don't necessarily know real quick. Uh, it's great, because there's a million songs on there. There's pop songs, there's rock songs, there's a lot of jazz, so another great purchase. Wish it had melodies, but it has all the chord changes you could want for so many songs, and it's great. It also has playback features, which are amazing. So you can, not only are they chord charts and you can read them and play along with whoever you're playing with, 
but in your practice sessions, you can change the key of these chord charts so it transposes it to other keys. You can play with the backing tracks and solo over them if you want to practice over certain changes. There are tons and tons of things. You can adjust the speed, uh, amazing practice tool. So not only is it great to have handy ready for gigs in case I need to look up things, it's amazing to use as a practice tool. So iReal, another amazing app. The last app is Scribed or Scribd, never sure how it's pronounced. But either way, this one, uh, all these apps so far you've had to pay for. Uh, Fourscore, I think is something like $10, iReal, probably around the same. Scribed is a free app, but it's a monthly membership. And so I have paid that, I don't know, for like two or three years now, but it's a fantastic resource because it has tons and tons and tons of sheet music. It, I, mean, I mean, it has a million other things. It has books and tons of educational content that you would want to read, but I use it pretty much exclusively for music. So anytime for a wedding, I have to look up some song for a ceremony or some song for the night and I don't know it, I look on there first. Hopefully there's sheet music. Often there is, if it's an obscure song, it probably won't be there, but there's so much that is there, it's worth paying the $8.99 per month that I've been paying for years. Okay, this next purchase was something I made recently and it is a backpack. Now, this is probably the best backpack I've ever bought in my entire life. It is so useful and handy for gigs and it's specifically made for musicians for gigs. So it's made by Daddario. It has a compartment in the front that you can put all your cables in. So I typically put some of my XLRs and then my quarter inches in there and you can arrange it in any way you would like. So let's say, for instance, you, I think there's space for seven cables. If you're not using all seven cables or you need to fit something that's bigger than the space allotted, there are easily removable Velcro tabs. So you can create more space if you need to. So I keep all my stuff in here. I keep my cables, I keep my microphones. I keep my iPad when I bring it to and from gigs. I keep my in-ear monitors. I keep my voice live touch, which is something else I'm about to talk about. Uh, I keep an extra power strip. All this stuff can fit in there. And not only that, but it has straps on the side that you can attach a microphone stand to. So if you're walking to your gig and you want to travel light, you don't want to have to carry that or your hands are already full, you can strap the microphone stand to your backpack. Amazing. If you are a singer or a guitarist or a solo performer, I think you'll get a lot of use out of these next couple of items. So the Voice Live Touch 2 is something that I've been using for a long time now on all my gigs, and it's certainly seen better days in terms of wear and tear, but it functions like a champ. I've had to get a new power supply for it, but uh, TC Helicon is pretty great. You just contact them, fill out some forms, and order a new one, and they ship it right to you. So that was no problem. Now, this thing is amazing. I don't even, I barely even scratched the surface of what it is capable of doing. It has tons of vocal effects that you can use to alter your voice or manipulate your voice in certain ways. You can have distortion, you can have flanger, you can have chorus, you can have doubles of your voice. You can tune your voice, different amounts of tuning. You can do so many things with it. Unbelievable, but what I really use this for and why I think it's amazing for solo performers is that you can use it to harmonize with yourself. So the way this thing works, is you can either plug in MIDI data. So if you're using a keyboard, playing keyboard, which I do with it all the time. So you can plug in a MIDI cable from the out of your keyboard into the in of the Voice Live Touch. And what it does is it reads all of the MIDI information that you are playing. So it will harmonize around you depending on which voices you have selected. Now you have a million different options. Well, really nine <laughs> options of what you can select in terms of harmonies, but they're amazing and they sound great and they read to your chords. So it's not just that you are singing a third above or a third below or a fifth above or a third, fifth below, and you can certainly program it to do that. But, huh, oops, notification here. But what it will do is often if you are playing, let's say, a G minor seven chord where you have a D, an F, a G, and a B flat, and you're singing an F, what it will often do is harmonize a G or harmonize that B flat. So you can get really close, interesting harmonies all read from MIDI. Now, MIDI is certainly the better way to use this pedal, I guess. It's not really a pedal, but it's certainly the better way to use the harmonizer on this because it reads it much clearer. Um, although, I gotta say, you can plug in your guitar and I use that just as much, and there really isn't much of a difference. I notice it because I use it all the time. It certainly reads MIDI a little bit better, 
but the average person, or especially the audience, which is the most important thing, are never gonna know the difference. And it sounds so good. Best harmonizer I've ever had, and way better than some of the other TC Helicon models I've seen. Um, I know they have a new version of it, and if I were an instrumentalist getting this today in 2022, I would probably opt for the foot pedal version, whether that's the three, which is a, I think is the one that's out, or an older model like this. I wouldn't go with the touch. I got that because I saw Kimber use it in a video and I thought it was sick. And I probably should have gone with the fit foot pedal switch because it's just so much easier to operate. So this next one is really only good for guitarists that are solo performers, but it's probably one of the best acoustic amps you can get ever. So I have played through my fair share of amps and I played through my fair share of PAs and I gotta say this Fishman kills and it really just doesn't even come close to so many of these other options out there. Like I prefer it, <laughs> I prefer it almost to all of my PAs that I've brought. If I have the choice to bring a Fishman or lug an entire PA, I know the Fishman is loud enough and will sound just as good if not better than the PA. And the only reason I ever bring a PA is because I play with more than one person a lot. If I was by myself, I would only use the Fishman all the time. It sounds so good. Um, so it has two inputs. You can plug in, both of them are XLR acceptable and you or t an instrument cable, and you can plug in either one. One will be for voice, one would be for your guitar. And on it, you have typical uh, three band EQ, low, mid, high, and you have onboard effects, which honestly sound pretty good. Not amazing, but good. Uh, I really only use the reverb and like maybe sometimes I use the delay on there, but there are other things like I think a chorus. The sound out of this is amazing. I barely ever turn it more than halfway. So I barely ever turn it more than noon and I've never had to go louder. And in fact, often I have to go lower because I wind up being too loud. So this thing can fill huge, huge venues. Any place that you would play as a gigging musician will be more than fine with a Fishman and it sounds so good. I can't, I can't sing this thing's praises enough. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to mention is some sort of all-in-one PA. Now, there are tons of options out there. I, I own two, and I'm gonna talk briefly about both of those, but you really should do your own research and look into these things. I can only speak from my own experience and the ones that I've used, but an all-in-one PA, you know, when you wanna get one of those things, it's really because you have a couple of singers maybe, or two guitarists, or maybe a guitarist and a keyboard player or something like that. And some of the ones that I have don't quite work for all of those configurations. But in general, one of these all-in-one PAs you need because you're singing with not just yourself. And so the first one, the Fender Passport, I have used for probably just as long as the Voice Live Touch. I think I got them around the same time. And for a long time, it was the only thing I used as my standard rig when I would go out to bars, go out to restaurants and play gigs. And it's great, you know, the acoustic guitar sounds really nice and full through it. The vo vocals, most importantly, sound really great. And you have same amount of control, low, mid, high. You have built-in reverb on there. You have an overall tone knob, which I don't really mess with. It's I guess it's kind of like a master EQ in a way. Um, and then overall volume. And you have four inputs, whether XLR or quarter inch. Now, this thing doesn't sound amazing. And granted, mine is an older model, so maybe the newer ones sound better but it is, it's good, it's okay. And it's definitely, especially if you're looking for something cheaper and something for your first PA, it's an amazing option. I've used it, I have the middle model and I've used that outside on like street corners for street fairs and stuff like that. I've used it in restaurants and I've never had a problem with filling the space. The larger model obviously does a much better job at outside gigs and similar big places that you have to play and fill up a lot of sound. But either one works. I have never heard the lower one, so I don't know. I've only used the middle and the higher model. So Logic stopped running in the middle of that. I'm gonna have to try to remember what I said and where I left off. Um, I believe that I was about to talk about the Evolve 30, which is the other PA system that I own. And it really is a great option for anyone that needs more inputs, but doesn't really want to buy a mixer, speakers, speaker stands, you know, the whole lugging the PA setup. I've only run a couple of gigs with it. And so far it sounds amazing. It has four inputs, one stereo input and one Bluetooth input, which is also stereo. So everything is controlled mix-wise via Bluetooth. You can control on your iPad, on your phone, you download the app from the store. 
You can control everything on the back physically if you'd prefer, but for me, it's just so much easier to do it on my iPad. And the sound quality has been really, really amazing. So all of my vocals and other singers have sounded really great through it. I currently use my electric guitar uh, without an amp through my Iridium and I have been running that into the Evolve for the past couple of gigs and it has sounded really, really good, better than I really would have thought it would have sounded. Um, I've run my acoustic guitar through it. I've yet to run my keyboard because I haven't had the opportunity, but I'm sure that will sound just as amazing as the guitars have sounded. I have put kick drum through it um, and that has honestly been great because it has a sub. Um, and that's one of the appealing things about it. So you can plug bass into it, you can plug sub, and you don't really have to worry about blowing out your speakers. Um, one of the downsides of the Passport is that you can't really run anything but guitar. You can run guitar and vocals, and you can run three singers if you want, and I've done that before, but it just doesn't handle anything that's not guitar very well. So it doesn't handle bass well at all, and it doesn't handle keyboard well because of the extended range of the instrument. So every time I've plugged keyboard into it, it's it's been okay, not great, and bass really doesn't sound good through the Passport. Again, it's not meant for it, I shouldn't have done it, but I needed to it at a gig, so I tried it. Um, so if you're looking for something with more inputs or something with a little more flexibility, Evolve is awesome. Um, Passport does kind of lack in that department, but again, Passport is a great cheap option, especially if you don't need a lot of inputs and you just need something with more sound or for a couple of extra uh, singers. And that's pretty much it, guys. These purchases have made the biggest difference to me in my gigging life. Let me know which ones you have, which ones you'd like to try, which ones you think work best for you. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.